Back with Grand Tactician Civil War Union Campaign. So as I mentioned uh, toward the end of the last episode, I've been kind of advancing time through the winter. We're now at the end of November. I had planned to go all the way through the winter, but some Confederate forces here uh, have crossed the James and are up here by Richmond making contact with the Army of the Potomac and an engagement is brewing. I have done some reorganization in the Army of the Potomac. <clears throat> uh, basically, I, I created a fifth core. I, I did not add that many units. I added, I added some batteries, uh, but I did not increase the amount of infantry in the army. But I paired off some brigades and created a fifth corps. Uh, I had, before that, I had uh, 12 brigades per corps, three divisions of four brigades each. And I found that just a little bit unwieldy in uh, some of the uh, battles in the summer. So I've gone down to three brigades per division, and that freed up enough brigades to create a fifth corps, uh, which is under the command of uh, William T. Sherman, who promoted up. He's risen through the ranks. He began as a brigade commander, got promoted to the first division of the first corps, uh, division command, and uh, is now a corps commander. And it's not a green corps because I transferred, you know, the, the troops in it came from the other corps. So most of them have combat experience. Um, the other thing, anyway, so I did that. The other thing I did was I added a lot more artillery to the army. Because I've had these artillery divisions. And... Uh, Sometimes they work out, sometimes they don't. What I did was I added another battery directly into the infantry division. So each division commander now has three brigades plus one battery of smoothbore artillery. And that way I, I keep the artillery spread out uh, more among the army and the, the batteries that are close by uh, the infantry or smooth bores for closer range work and you know canister fire and they're, they're almost all the default six pound smooth bores I think I may have a few Napoleons here and there um, a few of the divisions do have howitzers as well which are pretty effective at close range and they're short range weapons but anyway that's how I reorganized the army and now earlier than I intended we'll see how it works out the one thing is you know I did all that reorganization advanced time went for I don't know a couple weeks I guess I'm not a hundred you know I wasn't closely monitoring the army after that I was looking at other stuff when this battle popped I'm not a hundred percent sure that the reorganization is complete if all the brigades moving around got to where they were supposed to go. <laughs> now I can't look to see. Uh, what's interesting about this engagement is I do have the option to not fight a tactical battle but simply to go into a siege. Which would imply that these forces aren't really directly attacking into Richmond. Maybe they were trying to slip around and get up north toward Washington again and got caught by Hooker's uh, combat radius. The other thing that's interesting is there's only two corps of the Army of Northern Virginia eligible for this battle, in addition to the Lee's Army HQ, of course. Longstreet's and Hawes Corps. 
here's Longstreet's Corps right by Richmond. That's the one that, that's who made contact with Hooker. The other corps is over here to the uh, to the west. The Hall's Corps is here. Longstreet's here. Meanwhile, there is an Army of North Carolina here, right behind Longstreet, that apparently is not eligible to be pulled into this battle. I find that rather strange. There's also the Army of the Shenandoah here, at the same location that Hawes is, but it's not being pulled into the battle either. No big deal either way, but what I hope doesn't happen is that while we're in the tactical battle <laughs> and the Army of the Potomac is engaging Longstreet and Hawes, you know, I hope that the Army of North Carolina doesn't just, you know, skip on by, get up here, uh, you know, up by Fredericksburg or something and start causing havoc up here. And that would suck. Uh, I thought about going ahead and doing this defending bit and doing a siege uh, instead of a battle, but if that happens, that'll be on the campaign map, and Lee might be able to get more of his core over here to enter that siege, and uh, the Army of Shenandoah and the Army of North Carolina might join that as well and even up the odds. As it is, we've got the possibility of the entire Potomac Army to enter this battle and apparently only these two corps of the Army of Northern Virginia. So I think it's much better to fight this on the tactical map. Initially just Hooker but Sherman's 5th Corps is pretty close, six hours away. In addition to, of course, McDowell of the Army HQ. And then the 3rd Corps, if the battle goes to a second day, as they often do, the 3rd Corps is also pretty close. Uh, pretty confident that we shouldn't need the 1st and 4th Corps coming over from Charlottesville. In any case, here we go. I really like this load screen photo. Yeah, this isn't reenactors, you know, it's colorized. These are just guys goofing off in, uh, in camp. I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> Kind of interested to see what map we get for this battle here on the east side of Richmond. I'm guessing most likely the Appomattox map again, but maybe that maybe there's one that's more uh, appropriate for the the peninsula area between the York and the James. A lot of battles were fought there. In the seven days. Cold Harbor. Well, this is taking a while to load. Probably because I've got five cores. The other thing I was thinking about expanding the five cores uh, without 
hugely expanding the size of the army is that each individual yeah it is it's mechanicsville map each individual core will be a little bit smaller somewhere between uh, 25 to 30,000 men depending on casualties and recruitment and so forth therefore each core individually will draw less supply <clears throat> Spread them out a little bit more. Okay. Uh, apparently we're in an attacking situation. Currently just the one core that Lee's got. Long Streets, 22,000 men. Our some our condition is a little better than the Confederates. They are slightly better for supply, but not by very much. I wish I knew what this fighting spirit was all about. It looks like it's going to be nine hours for the fifth core. objectives. Just one. Gilman, way over here on the right side of the map. In Confederate hands. Okay, for routes, Confederacy has a route down here on the other side of the Chickahominy. A route here at Newbridge. A route down here uh, by Cold Harbor. Two routes by Cold Harbor. anything up here by Hall's store. And then our routes are this one here. Apparently that's it. Yeah, one here and then one up here by Laurel Grove. Okay. Shape of this deployment area suggests there might be Confederates right here by Mechanicsville. Which would make sense coming across the Mechanicsville Pike.
Okay, Hooker does have... Yeah, this this shows what I was talking about. Did get his battery, so there's... He's got an addition of... One battery per division. But these are now three brigade, not four brigade divisions. <clears throat> I also went through and make, you know... I, in the last battle, it turned out that I had forgotten to upgrade weapons and some infantry. I went through and did all that. Everyone is rifle armed. And the next, yeah, Sherman's Fifth Corps. This says 10 hours. And then there's a couple of divisions that have been renamed, uh, or annotated rather, with rifles and their brigades. I forgot to do Abercrombie. Everyone's got rifle muskets, but uh, any division that has breech loading or repeating rifles, um, I've put this rifles annotation on them. I think Hancock's brigades all have the old hall, uh, hall rifles whereas the uh, Meade's division and Tyler's Corps these these guys have the new uh, the newer Sharps rifles and then also got some some more uh, repeating and breech loading uh, carbines available for the cav. All the cavalry brigades, at least in this army, have got pretty good uh, cavalry weapons now. Okay. Well, our direct route to the objective will be right along uh, Shady Grove Road. The question is, do I want to face south toward Mechanicsville? Because I think there may be Confederates here. And then if they're not there, we can just go right up Old Church Road instead. I think that'll work. Okay, so I cut uh, I cut out some of the deployment stuff. And uh, got uh, Sherman kind of arrayed along this road and march order to come along Shady Grove. And Patterson is going to come down and use Old Church Road. Not Sherman's definitely going to form in here, and it'll be rough terrain. Um, but the idea is to outflank the Confederate position on their right using Sherman. Not 100% sure what uh, Patterson is going to do. It will depend on basically where Hawes shows up on the battlefield. May run into him down here somewhere. Okay. Nope. Well, the Confederates redeployed as well. get Patterson and uh, Sherman moving.
There's Lee. Nope, just far on this guy. I have to run all the way over there to do that. Just throwing some skirms out here to fire on this battery. Yeah, over here I, I threw up those little breastworks just because there's a lot of artillery in here. I don't really want, I'm not intending to assault across here. I'm just kind of need a force here to keep these guys honest and not move around. It is the first combat for all these divisional level uh, organic artillery. Seems to have been uh, effective enough. They're all finding targets. Okay, so there's two batteries. Bring this cavalry down here and see if anything's coming up from Cold Harbor. Sanford moving. Get 
Hancock moving. Move Wallace up just a little bit in these woods. Put some pressure on Jones there. No. Nope. His battery, though. Yeah, battery D. Howitzers, by the way. Um, I think I want to detach him so that he won't move when the infantry moves. He's got to wait to get that order, apparently. Okay, no Confederate spotted over here. There's this route. That would be embarrassing. Okay, I don't think Hawes is over here. Come down and scout this. Okay. So if I understand the game mechanics correctly, I can order Wallace's division forward, but his battery won't actually move. I think. Uh, actually, let's just have the Sturms beat up on this artillery first. Catching outside the influence of its commander. Okay, maybe that's a bad idea then. <laughs> Where is Sherman himself? Did I move him? Let's get Sherman up to about here. Let's have the calf come about oh here.
Apparently Buford only has two batteries, not three. I think that was an extra battery that I recruited and uh, didn't get to Sherman's Corps before this battle started. Okay. Let's move. Not Old Church Road. Let's use this. Uh, let's march down here toward Gaines Mill with Patterson. Is that what I want? I don't know. Let's go down Walnut Grove Church. I don't like this spot. That's better. A lot of units in here. I think Hawes and Longstreet's Corps may be combined here. Like Longstreet's right in the entrenchments and then Hawes may be this bunch over here. Just move up here on this Confederate Brigade. And for some reason, the AI does it sometimes. Perfectly good entrenchments, and they come out in front of them. Into my breastworks. That is perfectly fine. Okay. This is some terrible terrain over here. Let's 
and powered up to about Let's just wait and see what the calf sees over here first. all clear down here. I'm going to bring the calf back over here on the flank. Got him pull in his skirms so that we can get a full brigade's worth of fire on, I think this is Jones. time of it. Despite Lee being right behind him, prodding him along. Skirms in. They're almost out of ammo. Okay, it looks like Howard's clear to move up at least to here before deploying in the line. Here for some 
canister on them. Probably Jones there that broke. Yeah. Harney's I thought I had told him to pull the skirmishers back in. Good idea to put those breastworks up. <laughs> I only put them up to protect these guys from artillery fire while facing the entrenched line. Okay, battery F hasn't taken many losses. That brigade not broken and run yet. It's not even wavering. It's taking it has taken like 70, 60 or 70 percent casualties. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, hold on a minute. What we got going on here? Okay, Patterson needs to reorient now. Uh, first of all, Long needs to pull back to about... at least here. Where is Patterson himself? First, let's get this rear, uh, okay, there's Patterson, Kime, Kime needs to reorient this way.
Well, let's see. No, no. Right along Beaver Dam Creek is the place to defend here. So the artillery is already moving to a decent spot. I think that'll very least I'm not gonna tell them I'm not gonna give them a different movement order. A different movement order. Let's get them here. Um Tell Cadwell Otter to stop. Tell Sanford to stop. Kime He's going to form a line right here. I think I just need to tell Long to use his initiative until he gets those orders. And finally broke. Man, he took a lot of casualties in the process, though.
Long at least has these guys bottled up. Buying time for Patterson to reform. Let's get Cadwalader over here. No. I thought I could. There we go. Get him dismounted. Henry Rifles doing the job. Basically, he's throwing back a at least a Confederate division, if not a Confederate uh, or two Confederate divisions. They don't need to move back. Come on over here. I think those are skirms there. Captain skirmishers back in. have across this creek. Let's just start slowly advancing. Over here. We're going to retreat pretty much any moment. Oh! Battery F broken. Yeah, I didn't pay enough attention to him. How's this battery doing? Still doing fine. I should have kept a closer eye on that guy. Maybe moved him back. Maybe moved this brigade up a little bit.
And why are you turning all the way around? half of this. <clears throat> oh well. It's just six pounder field guns. <laughs> Depending on what their situation is after the battle, I may just disband them and uh, get them another battery. just goes across the swamp. Okay. Lost 18 guns. Lost a few calf. Not quite 1,300 infantry. So less than 1,800 overall. 10,000 Confederate. Most of it infantry. Cavalry. kind of interested to go through and see how those batteries did, the divisional batteries. Third Corps, 2,000 casualties and only the cab was engaged. Wow. And it was all from that, almost all from that one brigade, too, with the Henry rifles. Man, they were just out there scouting. A whole corps comes down the road, or. And they just stop them cold. Nice. Okay. Casualties pretty, or kills rather. Most of them aren't actual kills, but uh, 
pretty even across the, the three divisions. Battery F, that's the one that broke. 129. All the brigades pretty evenly engaged with the way that the uh, Confederates kind of made a across the board attack. First Brigade. Who was that? Meigs. Picked up some experience. Good for him. And the artillery do. Pretty even across the board with their bombardment. More experience. Okay. Not quite a major victory. We didn't quite get there with the casualties. Oh, very close. 23.5%. Maybe I could have been a little bit more aggressive, pushing to make sure we engage these guys on the retreat. I don't think we had that long, though. Either way, Lee will be retreating again. Enemy morale dropping, our experience rising. I hope that one uh, battery commander didn't get defanged. They were they were doing a good job up until that that point. Took heavy losses. Nope, that's a Confederate. That battery commander's name was Schweitzer, I think. Captured some more small arms. I, I noticed whenever I was uh, doling out improved weapons to the brigades off camera uh, have picked up a lot of reboard muskets. I think that's I think we're getting those from these uh, battlefield captures and if that's what they're primarily armed with it goes a long way toward explaining the casualty uh, mismatch. Which we go back and look at policies. Yeah, we started with this. Uh, no, those are, those are Union. Yeah, those are mine. Yeah, this one. Security measures. Confederacy will start the game with 50% less available ships and weapons. That's pretty good. I, I think that has been cascading through, and uh, they may be having trouble. Uh, getting good guns. I am not researching anything right now because this chapter 3 has not opened up just yet. I think that'll happen uh, here in a 
month or two. I've done all of the regular policies that I want up here, saving the last two policy slots for funding and military. And when I finished up with, uh, yeah, with Industry 3, I was looking around and I wasn't really interested in any of the acts available. They all seem to have downsides uh, that were at least as down as the good sides. And so right now I'm not uh, researching any policies. Anyway, pretty long video, even though I think, uh, hopefully I remember afterward to cut out some of that deployment phase during that battle. And another victory. Lee tried to get across the James, pushed them back. Now we need to see uh, what the Army of North Carolina does, since it was not in that battle. We may get another battle right after this. But that will have to wait for a future episode if that occurs. Thank you very much for watching.